Hello, hello. Happy Wednesday. We are halfway there. Um, how is everybody's Wednesday going? I hope that you're having a good week. I am just going to jump over here and pull up comments. Maybe. Where are we? So today, instead of a Dollar Tree craft, here we are, I thought we would paint this cute um, Halloween trick-or-treating candy corn door hanger. So um, if you don't, if you're like, what the heck is a door hanger? Door hangers are kind of like wreaths only they're hand painted and um, you hang them on your door. So it um, it's real lightweight. Um, it's not very uh, big or not very thick. See, it's real thin. So it's real lightweight um, and they just look really cute on your front door. So um, we're gonna paint this today or at least get started painting it. I don't know if we will finish the whole thing or not. Good morning, Joyce. How are you today? So, um, to start with, I'm gonna make sure you guys can see it. I believe you can. I'm gonna start painting the background. I've got a little friend here. Excuse me, friend, go away. <laughs> she wants to paint with us. We're gonna paint the background purple. So, um, this is Deco Art Lavender. I'm just gonna paint this background. So, let me know how your week is going so far. It's Wednesday. We're halfway there. Good morning, Connie. Morning, Leslie. I am ready. One of my kiddos is on fall break this next week. And one gets to do e-learning for two weeks. Yay! Um, we'll survive, I guess. So, that is going to be so much fun. Just... E-learning is not my thing. You know, I say kudos to those mamas who are out there who are teaching their kids at home, but it's just not me. I am not a, I'm not patient enough, I think. I don't know. By the end of the day, I'm just, I'm done. I need, I need mommy time. <laughs> So I'm, I'm ready for next week though, because I am going to go, um, help my grandma paint her house. She wants her living room painted. So I'm going to go help her with that. Hopefully get caught up on some orders, maybe start working on some Christmas stuff. So that's kind of my fall break plans. I'm not really going anywhere, just hanging out. And, uh, I'm sure my, my younger kid who's the one who doesn't, who does actually get a fall break. I'm sure his plan is to play video games all day. So, you know, that's when you're when you're nine, you can do whatever you want, right? So um, we're painting this Halloween door hanger. Um, these I cut myself. So I use um, Revolution plywood and um, cut the blanks myself. So if you didn't know, I do offer um, paint parties with these door hangers. So um, you can get a couple friends together and we can do a paint party. Um, so if you're wanting more information on that, you can shoot me a message and I can send you information. We can do a virtual. So if you aren't ready to have people over, um, but you're looking for a fun way to have a girl's night out, shoot me a message. We can always do a virtual party. Um, if you are ready to have a few friends over and you wanna do that, we can um, we can do a party at your house as well so and I don't have to come if you have a group of people you're kind of hanging out with and you know they're safe I can always um, just do myself virtual and and you guys can be at your house so we can there's lots of way to make that work in in COVID days so just shoot me a message and we can figure something out if you're interested it's a great time of year to um, to be doing those kind of things everybody likes to create as the holidays get closer so just painting the whole background here. Well, not the whole background. So everything but these candy corns over here, purple. And I realize that it's upside down to you, but I am not that talented of a painter yet um, to where I can paint upside down. So 
sorry. You just get to look at it upside down and backwards too, right? Because Facebook makes everything backwards. I don't know how to fix that. I should look into that because I know there's a way to fix it. So let me know what your fall break plans are. Are you getting a fall break? Are you... Ooh. You have plans. Just relaxing at home and doing a lot of nothingness. That's okay too. I am also um, offering the kids art kits, which is just the candy corn. So it's just one candy corn and it's bigger. It's about this big. Um, so also offering those. If you're looking for something for your kiddos to do on fall break, I dripped purple paint over there. Um, that's kind of a nice little craft. It should take an afternoon unless you just have crazy fast painters. Um, so keep them out of your hair for a, an hour or two. So if you're interested in those, uh, shoot me a message. We'll, we can get those to you. All right, so just painting this whole background purple. Um, when you're painting, you do wanna to try to keep your strokes going the same way as much as possible. So you'll see around the candy corns, I kind of went, um, vertical instead of horizontal but I am going back over those brush strokes to just make sure they look neat it's just kind of like coloring you want to make sure your brush strokes look neat because while you're not going to see all of them when the paint dries um, you probably will still be able to notice if you don't keep your brushes going the same way and it's okay if some of your wood grain shines through um, you may have to go back and add a second coat this purple looks like it's covering pretty well so we might be okay Um, I don't usually worry about painting the edges unless I just get a ton of paint on the sides and it looks real messy and then I might paint my edges. All right, so I've got a good coat of purple on there. Um, the next thing I want to do while that purple dries is start painting my candy corns. So I'm trying to think, are candy corns orange, white, yellow, yellow, white, orange? I think the white's in the middle. I guess they could be whatever we want them, right? So I'm gonna use this bright orange color. And it's almost gone. We're gonna tilt that upside down. And I'm gonna use a little smaller um, flat tip brush. So you know it's a flat tip brush because it's flat on the top. And um, it just is easy to use to get like around spaces. I like the way that it works. So it's kind of one of my favorite brushes. Okay, it's really gonna bother me if I paint this wrong, so I just have to look up candy corn and make sure I put the, the colors in the right order here. Candy corn. Who likes candy corn? I think it's kind of a big debate. Do you like candy corn? Do you not like candy corn? Yellow, orange, white. Okay, I'm glad I looked it up because I was gonna put the white in the middle. So orange goes in the middle. I kind of like candy corn. I like candy corn with peanuts. Uh, I think that's pretty tasty. I also like those um, those candy pumpkins they make, you know, that are just like the big blobs of whatever candy corn's made out of. I like that a lot. So we're painting the orange on the candy corn first because orange does not cover well. Um, I don't know, it's just something about the... Okay, so just painting the orange and when I get up to the purple I'm just making sure I have a good straight line there um, kind of a tip for new painters is if you start scoop up your paint get quite a bit of paint on your paintbrush start in the middle and drag it out and you won't end up with those thick lines of paint on your edges and you'll be able to to edge your things a lot better okay so there's one candy corn two candy corns here and I apologize if I feel out of if I seem out of sorts today I have a really bad migraine today but I still wanted to do this painting so I thought we'd jump on here and do it anyway morning Mary how are you 
Don't forget to um, sprinkle the video. You can be entered uh, for a chance to win some happy mail. And just type in the comments, sprinkled. I do appreciate that. It helps more people find my stuff. All right, so just getting up next to that purple, making sure we have a nice, clean line. So the great thing about these blanks is that I put all the lines on there for you. So even if you're not, um, I'm gonna turn this a little bit so I can get to this candy corn without dragging my hand through the purple. Um, if you're not a super talented painter, it's no worries. Anybody can do this, I promise you. Um, I wasn't always the best painter either, but the more that you do it, um, the better that you get. So if you, if you want to host a paint party, um, you don't have to be real talented or even have ever painted at all to be able to do this because all the lines are here for you and we will walk you through it step by step and everybody gets to leave with a beautifully painted door hanger. So, like I said, we can do those virtual as well. So if you um, don't live locally and you, you like what I do and you want to have a a party we can do a virtual party as well I can just mail you the the kit and stuff so just shoot me a message if you're interested all right just want to make sure you smooth out all your paint lines so you don't have any paint lines um, a slightly bigger brush might have been better for this but it's okay I picked this one so that's the one we went with if you're seeing a lot of paint lines in your paint, it means that your brush is um, is too small and you need a bigger brush. All right, so we've got a coat of orange. We're gonna let that dry because it's definitely gonna need another coat. Um, we will do yellow. Let's do the yellow next. So the yellow goes on the bottom of the candy corns. Put a little yellow paint here on our plate. And this is just bright yellow deco art paint. Okay. Go back over here. Um, I'm gonna use a little bigger brush this time. So again, it's a flat tip brush, but it's just a little bigger than the last brush. Which part did I say the yellow went on? Oh, I done forgot. The bottom. Yellow goes on the bottom. All right. Well, that's not good because that's where I got that purple, but I guess that's better than the white going down there, huh? And yellow is also one of those colors that's probably going to need two coats. Um, you could paint, like, underneath of here, white or um, a neutral color first, but I didn't. So this is what we're doing. So I'm just painting this yellow. Getting up there with my lines, up against my orange. And over here against my purple. By keeping your lines neat as you're painting, it saves you from having to go back up and do a lot of like clean up and stuff later. I used to not, um, like the first time I was throwing a coat of paint on, I would just slap it on and not really worry about like where the lines and stuff were. And then it takes a long time to come back later and kind of clean everything back up. So now I try to be a little more careful um, when I'm putting down even just the first coat. I'm a little worried about that purple. We'll see what happens. I might have should have tried to take it off. That's okay. Um, so anyways, if you... Make sure your lines are good and neat the first time, then you don't have to come back and try to clean it all up with, with more paint. So, all right, so just putting a good coat of yellow on here. You want it to be um, thick, but, but not so thick that it's never gonna dry, okay? If you get it too thick, you're gonna end up with crackled paint and it's not gonna dry and it's just gonna look bad but you don't want it so thin that you have to put like 27 coats on here either. So. I'm 
Let me know how your Wednesday's going. I was taking Oliver to school this morning and he was, um, we were talking about it being Wednesday. Apparently he says Wednesday is the worst day of the week because it begins with a W and worst also begins with a W. I'm not sure why Wednesday is the worst day of the week, but he insisted that it was. I said maybe it was winning Wednesday. You could win. He didn't like that answer. <laughs> it's a little pessimist sometimes. I'm not sure where he gets that. <laughs> All right, so just adding this yellow here to the bottom of my candy corns. See a little spot of orange I missed right there, so we'll come back and touch that up. And this is why I like the flat tip brush, because when you get to the edge, you can take it um, up and down like this and create nice lines up against whatever you're trying to, to paint, if that makes sense. So then you don't have to worry so much about getting out of the lines or whatever. Okay, so I think we got a good coat of yellow on there. I'm gonna put just a little more over top of this purple because it's gonna take some to cover, I think. Okay, um, we're gonna rinse that brush out and we're gonna paint the tops white. Just a little bit of white paint on our plate. I get all the yellow out of this brush because I do not want any yellow on my white paint. And I'm just kind of wiping it off on a baby. All right. So here we go. Tops of this is going to be white. Just like this. I'm just kind of angling um, the lines on the candy corn to kind of make it look a little more rounded, a little less square. Or triangular, I guess, is really the shape that this is. But... All right, so bringing that white down. Across just like that. And the top is also going to be white over here. So you can kind of see it starting to take shape. Looks like more than just a boring piece of wood. That is what I love about painting these door hangers because you start with such a blank, boring piece of wood and then you end up with this beautiful piece that you can hang on your door and go, I made that myself. Um, or if you're not a crafty person, you can buy them already done as well, but I enjoy um, having people make them because I think it just, it means a little more when you're able to go, I made that. That's mine. All right, let's see. I think our orange is dry, so we're gonna rinse our brush and give that orange another coat. It definitely needs it. I don't know what it is about orange, but it just does not cover well. I'm sure there's some technical reason behind the pigmentation of the colors. But I don't know what that is. All right, so I'm just gonna be real careful because I've already hit that white twice now. And make sure that I'm not 
dragging too much white paint down into my orange. And so as you paint, you kind of cover up the lines that are on here, but um, I'll show you here in a little bit. We'll go back and add some of those lines in um, really easily so that you can see them and go over them with um, either a paintbrush or a paint marker. Sharpie works well too. So if you're a newbie, it's real easy then to add those fine details back in with like a Sharpie. Um, and make it look really, really cool. Sometimes people are a little unsure as if they can add those details in themselves and it's really not that hard. All right, so paint this one. One more coat of orange. And I do have uh, painted door hangers for sale. So if you're interested in purchasing a painted door hanger, uh, we do have those already done. If you're just looking for something to brighten up your, your door, um, you can check out my Etsy shop and the links on my Facebook page. If you're local, the pumpkin shed here in Sellersburg, um, I have several door hangers set up there as well. So you can go check that out. They have a lot of cute stuff up there and really great prices on pumpkins. Um, so be sure to check out the pumpkin shed here in Sellersburg um, if you're looking for some fall decorations. Okay. All right, so we're going to rinse this out. I think our yellow's dry. So we'll add another coat of yellow as well. You guys see there? There we go. Try to make sure I stay on the camera, at least with what I'm doing, so you can see. All right, so just painting the candy corns. Dava purple is not covering well. Let's see what we can do with that. Okay. And last key. Just like that. All right. While well, that dries, I want to give this purple background a little more interest. So we're going to paint, or I'm going to paint the words um, trick or treat on here in a nice Halloween green color. But I kind of think it needs a little more than just the purple. So we're going to add polka dots. This will be good. So um, these are Martha Stewart paint daubers, I think is what they're called. I don't know. Um, but you can buy them at the craft stores like Michael's. And you get like a whole pack of them, all different sizes for like, I think it was $7. Seems right. They weren't terribly expensive. And you can use a coupon. So um, this one is one and three quarter inch. We're going to use this. So to use these, you just dip bring this over here so you can see you dip in your paint and you want to offload that's what this is called so you just take and you 
put on another area of your plate or palette or something um, to kind of get most or some of the paint off. And then when you dip it onto your um, picture or painting, whatever you're doing, you're just going to, um, mm, the first one's always the hardest to put on, I think. You're going to twist a little. So you're going to push down and twist and you have like a perfect, perfect polka dot. So I'll show you again. Um, I'm going to do one like half off like this. Um, we'll put another one here. Twist. Here. Twist. Twist. So look at those. It's like the perfect polka dot. I mean, I could not paint a polka dot that perfect for sure. So if you are looking to paint polka dots, I highly recommend that you get a set of these because they're not that expensive and they make these awesome polka dots. And part of what helps make polka dots and things like that when you're adding interest to pieces like this is to have them kind of half hanging off so they don't all look so perfect. And that will help um, make your, your painting look a little more interesting. Um, so here in a minute when these candy corns dry, we'll put some polka dots over on this side. They're still really wet so I can't do that just yet or I'm gonna smear paint everywhere. All right, so we got got our polka dots and just kind of press them back down over some of them to get out because they do kind of leave some air bubbles sometimes. Um, but if you just kind of go back over it, you can kind of pop any of those little bubbles that pop up and straighten up any edges you need to. All right, just got polka dots. Look at that. Look at that. I love the polka dots. Polka dots and buffalo plaid. You cannot go wrong, right? kind of waiting for this to dry a little bit more. I don't really want to get out the hair dryer. It's so loud. We may have to. This needs a little more yellow paint right here. That purple mess I made. All right. We got to get out the hair dryer because I'm an impatient person and it's not plugged in. We gotta plug the hair dryer in. I unplugged it yesterday so I could plug in my heat press and I didn't plug it back in. All right, so we're just gonna turn on the hair dryer. So for your warning, turn your sound down. this one again that's crazy purple I should have used a baby wipe to wipe that up a little bit more or put white down first before I painted this yellow I may still have to go back and put white down and then paint over it we'll just see what happens that purple's just so dark and the yellow is so light Just covering slowly but surely. Okay, um, so I wanna show you how to do the polka dots on the edges. Um, looking for a scrap piece of paper. So sometimes I use post-it notes because it's what's handy, um, but you can use like a scrap piece of paper as well. 
So you're just gonna set it up on the edge of whatever you don't want painted. We need a little more white. And then you're gonna take your, your dauber. I'm sure that's its technical name. And don't forget to offload and get most of that paint back off so you don't end up with goop of paint on your project. And then um, you're just gonna press it down, twist, just like we did last time. And so now you have like a half, a half of polka dot, three quarters of polka dot, whatever you wanna call that. So we're gonna do the same thing up here a couple times. Um, maybe take a little less of it. Ooh. So you do wanna make sure you get it right up on the edge of whatever you want your polka dot to be sticking out from. Let's see, that one at the top. All right, so let's do one here in the middle. And by varying like how much of the polka dot you're putting on the piece, it also helps them look a little more realistic. So I put one in the middle too. Just added three there on the sides um, to kind of give it a little more. So if you didn't do that and you just put all your polka dots in the middle, it would look okay. It's just not going to have that same effect as like having some hanging off does. Um, it just kind of makes it look more like a continuous pattern rather than, oh, I threw a whole bunch of polka dots right here in the middle of my piece. Okay. All right. So... I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do these candy corns um, and um, I'm going to show you kind of a beginner way that you can do it. Um, a lot of times I'll use a paintbrush to do the fine details with, um, but if you're not comfortable with a paintbrush, you can get paint pens or um, Sharpies work really well too. Um, so it, it just kind of gives you a little more stability. Um, sometimes you're a little, it's easier to handle something that you're used to using like a pen. So we're just going to trace around our piece with a pen. And I shook it up, but it's kind of thingy. There we go. And sometimes I don't take my lines all the way around. I kind of make them a little more whimsical or jagged looking. Um, these candy corns have these little stitches that we're going to draw in. Just something cute. Uh, you do want to make sure you don't get it in any wet paint. Um, so anywhere that the paint's still wet, we don't want to drag the marker through or the marker's going to end up with paint on it. So that's what makes it nice to have the lines already there for you because then you um, can just kind of trace over where they were or, or where, um, where you know they're supposed to be. And paint pens come in all different sizes. So you can get really thick lines or really thin lines, depending upon what you want. Okay, I'm not gonna touch that candy corn because it's still a little wet. I am gonna kind of trace the outline of my door hanger just to give it a little more whimsy and make it pop a little bit. Sorry, I didn't realize I was off the camera there. Tracing around the outside and we'll go ahead and do this candy corn The great thing about adding um, like the fine details like this too is you can cover up your paint lines and it just looks so much neater when you're done. Oh, 
but painting is a unique thing. Make it yours, you know. If you're painting something, do what you want and make it unique to you and, and who you are. I think that one's, I still have to figure out what I'm gonna do about that, that spot. But, so I'm just gonna kinda go around it for right now. Maybe not. It's still wet. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. All right, so whoop, I'm gonna put some stitches here. So the last thing that I will do when I make sure my paint is good and dry is put um, my letters on. And um, so I'm gonna do that. And then I will post a picture on our page here later so that you can see it. Um, don't forget to sprinkle the video. Stop by and visit our page, Redheaded Princess Designs, um, for all the things. T-shirts, um, door hangers, paint parties, all those things. So stop on over and check out what we have to offer. Um, we also have an Etsy shop, so you can go over and visit our Etsy shop. RH Princess Design, no S on the end. It's the only lets you have so many characters, so we had to shorten it. Um, but you can check out our Etsy shop, and the link is in our Facebook page as well. Um, but stop on over there. Let me know um, that you've stopped by. Be sure and follow so that you can check us out every time we're live. All right? Thanks so much for joining. Happy Wednesday. Have a great day. Bye-bye.